Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series. Facilitated by renowned educators, ISC podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. To find an updated list of podcasts, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts. Please be sure to listen to our important message following this episode regarding the risks of investing in exchange-traded options. But again, I think this is important because if you look at this chart in terms of the dollar index, and this dollar index is made up of six major currencies um, with different components. The euro is the heaviest weighted of this dollar index, about 57%. So if you think of the euro, you could probably use a mirror image on the euro on this as the dollar's moving. But the point is, major global macro events move the dollar, and the dollar does move in bull and bear market cycles, longer range cycle. Sure, it's hard to stay with these long-term major yearly moves, and I'm not saying you do, but keep in mind that the dollar does move this way. Um, and it does move up and it does move down. If you listen to the analyst, um, you know, people like Jim Rogers and others, you would think the dollar only goes one way and it's down, but it doesn't. And, and a lot of times, uh, most people lose sight of that, uh, and when they do, I think they lose uh, sight of a lot of opportunities. Here's our key premise that we premises I should say that, that we work off basically all the time when we look back. And again, we're stepping back and thinking of a longer term view here. And not that you can't use technical analysis, you can use technical analysis in, in your long term view, and we do use technical analysis. We tend to look at stay with weekly charts when we're trying to define our long-term view, weekly or monthly charts. But these are the key premise. And the first one, the, long the longer the time frame, the more the fundamentals impact price. <clears throat> Keep that in mind. If you're a technical player, you're not necessarily concerned about fundamentals. I understand there are a lot of great technical analysts, a lot of systems players that just don't want to get involved in the fundamentals. And, and that makes some sense. But we also think that if you have a, a market view and understand the longer-term trend, it puts you in the ballpark park and increases your success. And without a doubt, over time, the fundamentals play the key role driving currencies over the long run. Um, it's, it's a fact, uh, it's really just a fact of life. Currencies are what fund the capital, real capital flow, real capital goods, excuse me, and real capital flow around the world. So it has to work that way. Key global macro fundamental events are drive currency drive capital flow around the world. Therefore, they are the underlying driver. And when you step back, you can tend to start to see those things. And this is, you know, this first point here, the long-term time frame uh, fundamentals drive price, is why we think using the FX option product is so great. You can buy an option, and you can sit back and wait. When you're buying a long-term option, you're buying yourself time to let fundamentals play out. And that's why we think that options fit so well uh, with a long-term strategy that's based as much on fundamentals as it is on uh, technical analysis. So that's the key, uh, key point number one. Number two, the U.S. dollar is the world reserve currency. You may have heard this standard about this world reserve currency status. It is very, very important. And to put it in a sentence, people have to hold dollars. That's what, that's what makes the dollar very, very special. People have to hold dollars. Because of its world reserve currency status, people need dollars to trade. Most, most global commodities are priced in dial, dollars. As you know, most all oil trading is priced in dollars. Gold is priced in dollars. Countries around the world must hold dollars. You don't have to hold other currencies. It's not necessary. You have to hold dollars to facilitate real global trade trade and capital flow, and that makes a big difference. It's allowed the U.S. government, in fact, to be uh, to overextend to such a degree because they've used this world currency status. Um, they, they've really abused it, to tell you the truth, and we all know that, but yet the dollar has still held up yeah, despite what our government's been doing because of this. People need dollars to to trade, and it's that simple. And that makes the dollar very, very different in that way. It makes it different because if because the U.S. is a world reserve currency, people have to hold dollars by virtue of it being the world reserve currency. And the background is you tend to have the deepest capital markets, and we do. You tend to have the strongest defense um, shield, and we do. So these are all subsidiary factors of a world reserve currency uh, that make it valuable. The U.S. government can use it as a, you know, a stick and a carrot and a stick type of thing. Um, its status in the world um, to get people to hold dollars uh, in, a, in a way that, that doesn't happen with other currencies. 
deflation. In a deflationary environment, the World Reserve currency tends to do well. In recessionary environments, the the world reserve currency, the U.S. dollar, tends to move well because people tend to get move in these fear cycles. People become afraid, and I'm not talking about just regular people. I'm talking about institutions. They have to hide money, and the only place to hide major, major, sort major <coughs> pools of funds is in the U.S. dollar. We have the deepest markets, so that's a that's a big, powerful support for the dollar. One of the points I wanted to make about the about this recession before I forget it, just to, just kind of an aside, something to keep in your head. Um, prior to this recession, the U.S. dollar rallied uh, more than the other major currencies in the world in four of the last five recessions. This is the sixth recession, and we've already seen the U.S. dollar rally more than the other major currencies in this sixth recession. We think this sixth recession here, um, and the dollar move is going to be. Um, far greater than it was in the past because we don't think this recession is a normal cyclical recession. We think this is a structural problem and a change in the global economy. So keep in mind, the world reserve currency tends to do well in very extended periods of risk aversion just by the virtue of what it is. And that's what we're seeing in the dollar. It's ugly, ugly, ugly in the U.S. economy, but guess what? The U.S. dollar has been up massively since this credit crunch started. I say massively. Um, 25 percent range um, and it's and it could go obviously a lot higher we think and I'll get into that supply and demand as I said currencies are free floating now supply and demand there's a lot of things we see in the world in the news it hits the news but there's a ton of stuff underneath the new underneath <clears throat> going on underneath the economy that we don't see and that's what we find perplexing a lot of time we'll see the fundamental news suggest that the dollar should get should crater, and sure enough, the dollar is rallying in a very, very big way. We see this in even short-term events. Uh, we see a report come out. We think that's going to be very, very negative. We get the report right, and the currency acts exactly opposite to what we thought. Step back and use that perspective uh, on a long-term basis, and, and this applies here. Most people um, a year ago would have said, and a lot of people are still saying it, that if the U.S. economy craters and the world goes into a major global recession, you want to sell the dollar and buy gold. Well, uh, buying gold was okay. Yeah, gold held up all right. But selling the dollar was kind of the bad part of that. They thought in terms of just egocentric, only the U.S., of the ugliness in the U.S. Currencies, trading is a relative game. And supply and demand is driven not only by relative growth, but also by a lot of other factors that go on underneath the surface, like panic and fear, where big money flow has to move. The U.S. dollar has moved uh, substantially, even though the U.S. economy has gotten nasty, nasty, nasty. Um, even though the government has pumped out as much as they can of U.S. dollars out in the world, the U.S. dollar has rallied. Why is that? It's because the supply of dollars around the world has actually declined. And most people, again, aren't thinking of global money flow. They're saying the U.S. government is, is putting so much money out in the world that the that the currency has to fall. The supply is, is, is just growing in a, in a big way. Well, it's not. And again, I'll show you just a, a key macro factor and a chart that you can look at on your own to say, hey, is the supply of dollars around the world growing or not? It's not. It's shrinking rapidly. U.S. dollar-based credit around the world is shrinking very, very fast. Yet the demand for U.S. dollar-based credit is is as high as it ever was and even higher because people are dying for liquidity out there, um, emerging markets um, and, and others. So despite all the stuff going on above, above the surface in terms of all the bad news and economics we know, below the surface, the supply of dollars is falling and the demand for dollars is rising. So that's why the dollar has gone up. It's that key factor. And I'll show you one chart that, that I think will prove that. Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts.